Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. This is Optibotomist coming to you with another video review. And today we're going to be taking a look at the new Takara Tomi Transformers Masterpiece 29 of the Destron Laser Wave. Or as we more commonly know him as, the one and only Shockwave. Now this is one that a lot of people, including myself, have really been looking forward to for a very long time. And there was a lot of kind of uncertainty on if they would ever be able to actually do this. But here he is and he looks terrific. For the package, you can see a little bit bigger than what we're used to. Now, using Hot Rod's package, you can see that uh, it is a little bit larger. Uh, not as big as like the Seeker box or anything like that, but it is considerably bigger than what we were getting with the, uh, you know, Masterpiece cars. You can see that uh, it's got MP29, the Decepticon logo. Uh, Destron is the Japanese name for Decepticon, and it shows that he's the military operations commander. Run here on the side, you got the masterpiece, that logo right there, you got a shockwave right in the top. On the back here, you have what I'm assuming is a bio read up on him. And then several different product shots showing uh, robot mode, his gun mode, how he scales with uh, some other masterpiece figures, and then down here, basically his backpack and what you're able to do with it. And how it actually even comes with a bit of a stand here so you can display him in his space gun mode. So really very, very cool. Like I said, this was definitely a figure that you know, a lot of us collectors really never were all that certain on if we would ever get this. There's been a ton of third-party figures on this, and for a lot of us, that filled in the gap for a very long time. But here we have the official one, so without further ado, let's get this guy open and see how cool he actually is. Hey guys, so here we have Masterpiece Shockwave open up and out of his packaging. And as always, uh, we do get a collector card with it. You can see Transformers Masterpiece at the top, the MP29 Destron Laser Wave. I really love the art that's on there, uh, especially here in the gun mode. You can see on the inside like this blast forming with electricity. That looks really very cool. I absolutely love that. Then you come around here to the back, you got a product shot of his uh, robot mode as well as his laser Vulcan mode or just space gun, I guess. Uh, his tech specs and then what I'm assuming is going to be a bio. Uh, now this part has kind of gotten some people a little bit miffed, I guess. Uh, he comes with some stickers that obviously you have to take off and you have to apply yourself. The complaint is if you're paying this much money for a figure, you don't want to put stickers on there. And I get that, but honestly, I like this. Uh, as you can see, you get some standard Decepticon logos and then you get some crazy kind of cartoon looking Decepticon logos. I mean, if you watch the cartoon, a lot of times the Decepticon logos really were kind of all over the place. So you, so you get a more standard look and then you get some that kind of replicate the cartoon a little bit more. And honestly, I think I'm to use these you know if like repro labels came out with a set with a whole bunch of these i would probably use these on a lot of my figures i just as you guys know really like my masterpiece figures looking as close to you know the cartoon as possible and this really does bring that out i, I really like that so i do get where people complain because you know stickers can wear over time and again if you're paying this kind of money for a figure you don't want something like that that could potentially wear but i do appreciate the uh, the option that they're giving us with these it's not something that you know they they had to do but i am happy with it uh you do get this little insert here i have no idea what it is or means uh somebody can probably use that little code there to do something so go for it i i have no idea what it does but you do get that and then you get the instruction sheet with it uh and again i can't read any of this stuff that's on here but you have a little bit of a bio for a laser wave kind of talking about his robot mode his vehicle mode or, or gun mode images of the toy you come around here to the side uh you got the kind of breakdown of what some of these accessories that he comes with kind of tie into in terms of the cartoon like for example the, the laser vulcan he's got a handheld version of himself uh he's got got his backpack you got you know hand that allows him to salute and then of course you got the instructions and the instructions are really very good on here this is actually a fairly simple transformation definitely is a masterpiece style but in general is fairly simplistic in nature and i actually really do like that now i was showing you uh his little handheld gun this is it i mean <laughs> you can see that's what it is uh now he did use uh, this one time i'll put a picture right here where you can see it uh he held himself uh why i have no idea but he did so they include this as an accessory and i absolutely love it i think it's really cool that they did it it very 
very nicely recreates how the bigger one looks, uh, even going as far as giving a uh, actual string here at the top for what would otherwise be his hose on here. So I really dig how they did that, but real good detail on there. You can see you got the barrel and things like that. So really very happy you come around to the bottom. And that's where his chest is obviously in his uh, robot mode. Uh, and then he comes with a bunch of different hands. Now, we got two that are currently on them, and these actually swap out very, very easily. Uh, now, there was another scene that I'll put right here where he had two regular hands. He didn't have the cannon on his hand. So they give you, you know, both a right and left version that you can recreate that with if you want to, and you can see that it has this kind of softer purple look. And then you do get this piece where you can have him salute. Again, I'll put the picture right there. Uh, honestly, though, y you really can't get it because he doesn't have a double elbow joint but you can at least have that on there now if you don't like these you know softer purple kind of colors you do get full-on translucent colors which again works a little bit better with uh, the light up function which yes this does have but you can see that you get a, a right and left I'm sorry a right version uh, in this clear setup and it's the same level of articulation but you got a, a translucent purple just fisted hand you get a translucent purple uh, saluting hand and then you get a translucent purple a uh, cannon hand so these pop in and out very very easily so that is something that is really cool and i do appreciate it it allows you to you know if you want more of that cartoon look you can do it with you know these uh, solid colored hands or if you wanted to go with the more you know toy sort of look you can go with the more translucent color ones which is awesome i think that that's great now getting these out of the way the other thing that it comes with and this is actually really very cool and something that you know i mean when it comes down to a shockwave has had several third-party figures and one thing that none of them have ever come with is a stand. Uh, this actually dubs as his backpack and also a stand. You can see you got this little clear section right here with these little grooves. You literally just take that, you put that there, and now you can stand it. I mean, that's something, like I said, that we never got with a third-party figure. Now, there were some other, I guess, fan-made stands that you could use uh, with, like, Quake Wave and things like that. But I think it's actually really cool that they included this. Uh, and then you can just take this. This can actually rotate around. And this will become his backpack in robot mode. So that's a great little addition. But uh, coming to the figure himself, here in his Vulcan laser mode or whatever they call it, this is actually not too bad. It, it definitely has a better robot mode than it does, you know, this gun mode. Uh, there, there are a few problems that I have with it. Number one, I don't like this big giant gap. You can see in the back section here, it's just completely open and that's really ugly. I also really don't like the way that these feet kind of hang out here. I mean, that's kind of the way that the actual toy was, but you got this big gap right there as well. That's all kind of ugly and there's not really much that you can do with it. I mean, you can lift that up a little bit more and there's nothing you can do with that. Uh, that's a little bit unfortunate. Everything else, I mean, it, it kind of replicates how it looked. I should probably leave the stand out here so I can use it uh, more or less. Uh, but a, a lot of the look on this really does kind of capture how that toy looked. And bringing that in, uh, one thing that you're noticing right up front is the color. I also don't have a cap for it. I don't know what I did with it, but it's, you know, it goes on there. This is a much darker purple. This is a little bit lighter of a color, but still not entirely what I think of in terms of a purple that Shockwave had in the cartoon. Uh, it's, it's more like an in-between between these uh, two different figures. Uh, I don't mind this. There are some scenes where it does definitely get much lighter like what we have here for the toy. But color wise is something that you know some people have complained about but uh, you can see that the the handle here just kind of fits a lot better This is a much uh, cleaner kind of look. I mean, that's just closed off uh, now I mean, obviously you couldn't stand this on anything you you could I mean what I always used to do You'd go like that and you would just stand it like that on his feet so you could do that as well But uh, I just think that like even on the g1 toy the back just kind of fills in a little bit better I mean, there's no gap right there and then the the handle here looks a little bit better uh, in terms of how it feels in your hand uh, It's not bad. Uh, honestly um, it, it, it does. I mean th this little box bottom section here does kind of dig in a little bit more than the G1 toy did, but uh, it, it is roughly the same size or so. I mean, it's a little bit no, actually, now that I'm looking at it, it is almost exactly the same length. Uh, obviously, this is missing the uh, the barrel that wraps around here, but it is roughly the exact same, which is kind of impressive. But you can see that, I mean, in terms of the overall look, it, it is very similar. You, you had a lot of these little holes and screw holes on here, so 
Whether or not they did that as an homage to the original, I have no idea, but it definitely does carry over still on that just popped out uh, but i mean you do have a little target right here i think that that's really cool I mean, it's a little bit harder to see uh, on both of them but you do have that target that's still there one thing that i absolutely love as you can see these hoses were notorious for completely falling apart and mine is as well i mean you can see just how bad that is what they did here though is absolutely brilliant this is actually metal uh, it, it feels like there's something in between it, now, it this can't come out by the way oops pull that out just like though it set that there but what they actually did is made this a metal kind of spring on the inside here i don't know how you're not going to be able to see it very well but on the inside here, maybe if I stretch it out a little bit, you can kind of see on the inside there is a wire that kind of keeps it together. So you can't pull that apart, which is really very cool. I like that. But you still get the flexibility that you should have. And I, I think that's awesome. This is not going to fall apart or anything. That is a great great intervention that they used for this. Uh, and then you just kind of peg that there, bring that around on here, and you can peg that in just like so. Uh, now, like I said, it does have a uh, light up gimmick. Uh, this keeps popping up. You, you do have the trigger right down here, and then you two actually get two different settings. Uh, you can push the button, and you can see that it'll light up, it'll fade out. It does that for a little while, it just kind of blinks. There are no sounds, and some people complain they wish that it did have sounds, which I'm kind of indifferent about. I don't really care if it had sounds. The original toys, the sounds were really very obnoxious, so I'm kind of glad that they didn't have that on here. And as you can see, it turns off you know, after a little while, which is really very good. I do think that, you know, having the sounds would have been nice, and it probably would have made a lot more people happy, but I'm, I'm perfectly content with it not being in there. And then you come around to the other side, you have the little switch right here on the side. You flip that up, and then you pull the trigger again, and then it just blinks. It, you pull the trigger, and each time you... Uh, pull the trigger it turns on so you can go pew 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 make your own sounds or like i said you can do that flip that switch you can then pull the trigger and then it'll fade in and out over and over without actually having to hit the trigger and then you can actually see that it is a pretty bright light coming through there and it kind of bleeds through here on the little vents a little bit it's not too terribly bad but the front there though really does look cool and you can see just how bright that actually gets i'm really very happy with how that turned out it wasn't something that it was going to be a deal breaker for me if they had it or you know same thing with the sounds if the sounds were there great but because it's not there it's not a deal breaker much like if the lights weren't there it wasn't going to be a deal breaker but i'm glad that they found a way to work it in and it actually turned out pretty decently now, like I said, the transformation is actually pretty simple to do. Uh, we're going to set this off to the side, but we are going to need this eventually. So just take this and kind of position it like that and then set it off. We'll bring it in back here in a second. Uh, first, you're going to take this little uh, target section. You're going to fold this up and then you're going to untab this. It has little slots right here that tab in. Just fold that up just like so. And then take these and then slip these out and then rotate those around just like that on both sides. Come around here to the bottom. Uh, this probably is gonna flop up at some point in time, so if it hasn't gone up, just push that up just like that, and then detach this. You got a little section right down here that tabs up there, so just detach that, and then fold these down just like so. If you had these like this, uh, that's actually supposed to, like if you just wiggle that, you can bring those around. It's not gonna damage or anything, but just bring that down just like that, and then split these legs, and then just swivel them out to this side just like so. We're going to then take these, rotate this around. That's going to be his foot. Rotate that around as well. Do that on both sides. Kind of position it how you want. These little pieces right here will rotate out. And then they spin around. And then come around and lock into place right here in the front. So just get that lined up. And make sure... There we go. Come on. Bring that up and around and tab that in there just like that. Do that on this side as well. So we're going to spin that around, extend that out, and then slot that front section just like so. Then bring these down 
and extend these like that. Then this section right here, you wanna rotate this around. This little slot is going to then come in and tab in there. So just bring this in and literally the feet or the, uh, the outer shin just kind of fits around that piece and you just push that in just like that. So do that again here, you kind of keep that out, rotate this around, extend that down, spin that around more, rotate that all the way around, and then you tuck that in and give that a nice little squeeze. Actually, pretty simple transformation in the legs, but decently involved, I would say. Come around here and then you rotate them around at the upper part of the thigh, just like so. Make sure you give these a nice little squeeze so that it kind of fills in any kind of gap that there might be. And basically, yeah, you have his legs done already, which is probably the most difficult part on this. Come up to the top section here, and then these little pieces right here on the side will accordion out, and then they swivel all the way up and lock into place right up there. Do that on this side as well. Rotate that out, bring that in. That kind of locks into place just like so. Slightly split the hands, and then you can take this entire assembly, swivel this back, and then this rotates up. We'll just kind of leave it there for right now because like I said, we're going to attach this to it in a second. And then you just bring these arms down. So very G1, it's kind of silly. Bring that down, bring that down, just like so. Reach in here, make sure that that's tucked all the way in. And then you have a little section that slides down all the way, kind of fills in that gap. Reach in here and then take this entire torso section this will extend up just one notch, and then again, just make sure that you push that as far down as possible, to kind of filling in that gap. Reach in here. This can actually be a little bit tricky, but reach in here, grab the head, and pull this up. Now, I see a lot of people that are doing this already, and they're like, oh, well, it doesn't stay in. If you just give it a nice little pull, uh, sometimes it pulls the head off, but if you pull that back, it actually locks it. You could hear it click into place. And now it's not falling down there or anything. It locks in there perfectly securely. So you wanna make sure that you do that. But straighten this out like so. Now, like I said, we got his little backpack section here. Basically what you wanna do is kinda lift this, bring this in like so, bring this around, and you can see that you got little tabs right here that if you don't put this on, you can leave this here, you can bring this down, and you can push this in. That'll tab on here, you got the little slots on the back here, but you can bring this up and take this little bottom section right here and it's gonna go through a hole right there. So just put that through, push that all the way up so that, that on the inside here, these little slots that are on the clear piece line up with the slots that are on the actual attached piece. And then bring that down and you can then push that, tab that into place very nicely. This section you push down, rotate this up and around. That collapses all the way there. Now you got his backpack, kind of straighten out his legs, how you see fit. Position his head a little bit better. And there you have Shockwave in his robot mode. And this guy turned out really very cool. Now, as the guy who kind of introduced the world to fans' toys by doing the very first review of Quake Wave, my expectations for this were actually really pretty high. When I found out about this figure, I was like, I, I, I don't know. That Quake Wave figure really is very impressive, and I still think that absolutely today. But when I did see this, I did take my Quake Wave, and I ended up selling it. And now having this in hand, I do not regret that decision at all. This guy turned out very, very nicely. One of the things that I think absolutely kind of sets this apart from that Quake Wave, and like I said, I don't have it anymore, so I can't really do a side-by-side -side comparison, is the way that these legs are. Uh, now, that's not to say that I didn't like the Quake Wave aesthetic or anything, but this definitely has a much more accurate representation to the, the actual cartoon character, and I think that looks great, especially here in the legs. I think that that just comes together very, very nicely. Now, one thing I will say is that I do kind of like the transformation on Quake Wave a little bit more than this. It's a little bit more involved, but that's not to say that this is a bad transformation. The engineering on both is really very good. Quake Waves is just a little bit more, I guess, 
expert level. It's got a higher degree of a challenge in the transformation than this. But that's not to say that this is a bad transformation. As you can see, it's very simple and it does nicely homage that original G1 toy while still giving it a, a you know, flair for the masterpiece kind of aesthetic. Uh, now, one thing that's actually really very cool about this is you can do a couple different things you know, when it comes to creating what you may like. Uh, like I talked about, you can kind of set this up in a way where you can have a, a cartoon look for it or you know a more toy look so setting this right there and bringing in the toy for a comparison as you can see just how dark this actually gets a lot of people that actually liked displaying the hose on the front section uh, in a lot of comic books and things like that the hose was on the top you could do that here i'm going to be very careful with mine so it doesn't fall apart more and i think a little piece actually did kind of fall out and you can actually do that with this as well. It's very easy. You just literally rotate the arm around. And you can even do that on this side as well. So depending on which way you want to have your arms positioned, you can do it. And it actually does look a little bit better because you got a little higher of a the outside panel when you do it this way. If you leave it like that, you know, that higher panel is on the inside, which kind of, you know, looks a little weird. I don't think it looks all that bad. And honestly, you probably didn't even notice it until I pointed it out. But you can do that very easily. Uh, again, if you want that uh, toy look for the hands, all you have to do is literally pull these out. They just peg on there. So you can take this out, you can put this on. Now, some people will probably ask why we don't have you know, a right hand in this color. And it makes sense that we don't because you never had a right, or I'm sorry, a left hand in this color. You never had a left hand that was translucent. You had the gun that was translucent. So you put that on there and now you can basically recreate you know, that toy sort of look which is absolutely terrific. Uh, the other thing that you can do, uh, like I was showing before, is uh, you can have them actually have uh, both hands. Uh, it happened once, um, may maybe more than once. Honestly, I don't remember. I remember one time that I actually showed. So if you wanted to do that, you could do something like that as well. So you got those hands that allow you to display it in that kind of configuration. Again, it's all a matter of personal preference, really. Uh, you can leave this on there you can give him a saluting hand which like i was talking about doesn't really do too much because y you don't have a double joint here so all you can really do is do something like that which i mean i, I guess it doesn't even it you can't get it close enough to his head well i got all right i lied I, I guess you can do something like that you know i i guess um it's a little bit further away if you had more of a double hinge right here you could do it and i don't even think no nah, that that doesn't have more of a joint on there so this is basically the best that you're going to get for a, a saluting kind of pose uh and then you do get a clear one that's done in that kind of saluting thing that's kind of pointless you don't really need that i don't think but it is an option that you have uh, you can not put the regular hand back on there and then again you do have the small version of them it holds on just like almost every masterpiece kind of hand and gun sort of thing so you just put that on there and you can have <laughs> and that is just cool i really dig that 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 just it's funny because he's holding himself so it, it, it's strange it would be like megatron holding himself it just doesn't make any sense uh but uh just wiggle that out just like so but uh if you wanted to kind of recreate that the toy look you absolutely can and standing them side by side you can actually see that they are a very close height but the G1 toy is a little bit taller, but you got the little, you know, backpack thing going on here. I mean, that sits down a whole lot lower. That looks a lot more, like I said, cartoon accurate. So I'm really very happy with how it turned out. Now, uh, for some more Masterpiece Decepticon uh, comparisons, again, here he is. And at first here we have him next to the Masterpiece Soundwave. And this is, uh, you know, some people kind of complain about the height on this guy. He should be a little bit taller, roughly about there. Uh, that's one thing that they think that a Quake Wave does a little bit better of a job of, uh, kind of recreating the overall size. But uh, you can see, I don't really think it's that big a difference. I mean, it's it's not something that stands out that much to me. It's pretty close. And, and honestly, you're, you're looking at like a millimeter 
meter, you know, in terms of the size. But people talk about how he should be taller and maybe a little bit, but I don't think it's as big of a difference as people are making it out to be. I mean, when you look at the kind of the holy grail of uh, Transformers scale images, you look at the uh, Sunbow image and you can see that the size is pretty darn close. It really is almost indistinguishable and I think for the toys here, they did a good job. And for another comparison to a Masterpiece figure, uh, here he is obviously next to uh, Starscream, so Thundercracker, Skywarp, they're all going to be about the same, but uh, he's a little bit taller than Starscream is, so, I mean, that kind of works. I mean, at the head, not so much at these little uh, side pieces, but at the head, he's a little bit taller, so again, I think that the scale is just about where I would not care so much because this is the, the Masterpiece version of Megatron that I kind of have in my collection. Here he is next to Apollyon. And again, he's a little bit smaller, but the scale, I think, works really good here. But he is definitely smaller than that fan's Toys Quake Wave. Now, for some of the other features on him, uh, unfortunately, I, I don't have the battery size to be able to show this to you. But you got a little button right here that can actually light up his arm cannon. Uh, you, you take this one. It looks a little bit better when you have the clear one on there. It lights that whole thing up. You just push the button and it's the exact same thing where you can have the slow fade in or you can have it blinking kind of thing. But uh, unfortunately, I can't show you that because like I said, I don't have those batteries uh, readily available. Uh, the batteries for the actual uh, gun mode though, those are just standard AAA batteries. So those are easy to kind of come across. These are the little button cell batteries that uh, you come around here. You just unscrew that and you put them in there. And Unfortunately, it doesn't come with them, but I kind of expected that. And then as you can see, uh, he doesn't have a uh, light up eyes, but he does have some serious light piping here in the back that as you can see with like my bright lights here, you can get a real cool look for it. You know, maybe have him, I am shockwave or something like that. I don't know. Uh, this chest piece doesn't light up or anything, but you got really nice detail on the inside there. I really like how that looks. Just in general, everything came together very, very nicely with this guy. You know, I know some people were a little bit kind of meh with the recent releases of say Hot Rod and Ironhide. I really think that this one nails it. They just did a great, great job overall with this entire figure. Now, for his articulation, uh, the head is on a ball joint. You can see he gets a real high range of motion looking up. You can look left and right, everything. You can kind of tilt it, get some like emoting, like, huh? Kind of look on there. Uh, the shoulders here are on soft ratchet joints, so you can rotate that all the way around. This will kind of get in the way when you're doing it, but you could kind of almost do it. I mean, it would be a little bit problematic to do. Uh, you got a joint right here as part of the transformation, and then you have another one on the outside there. So you kind of have two shoulder joints. So you get a nice full range of motion with the upper part of his arms. The shoulders here, I'm sorry, the elbows here rotate. You also have a bend right there. You can see it goes all the way around. You can bend it the exact same amount of distance regardless of what configuration you go for. Uh, the hands here can rotate. These are on a smaller ball joint and then you got the fingers here that are articulated. Obviously there's no articulation in his cannon but the uh, clear hand does have that exact same amount of articulation. Same with the ball joint and then the saluting hand just has a ball joint right there so you can kind of rotate that around as well. Uh, the waist, if you have this all hooked in, it kind of locks things in but if you detach this this, that pulls that out like so you can get it rotating just like so but when you have that pegged in there it kind of locks things into place so you can't really do too much uh, but it does actually have a forward and back pivot at the abs which is really cool that's what kind of extending that whole section does for you but it kind of makes that little bit slide up so you just put that back these little skirt pieces do lift forward and they got side ones as well so you can move your legs forward and back you can hear nice ratchet joints there the outer motion though is just friction so you got the rotation here on a nice solid ratchet these it, it's not loose but it does feel a little bit looser and that's a little bit unfortunate but it, it's obviously as you can see it's not flopping down i mean shaking it it stays out there pretty decently uh, he does rotate at the upper part of the thigh bends here at the knee but only about that far you can see that the back section does kind of get in the way and then the ankles 
can move forward, they can move back, and they can also tilt in and out. And then one thing that is also very nice, uh, we've gotten away from it for a while because most of them are kind of smaller, but he does have die cast built into the actual feet, much like the G1 toy did, which is cool. So this whole section down here, um, I'm trying to feel, yeah, the, the little gray piece up here is die cast. That feels like it's die cast. So again, much like the G1 toy had die cast in the feet, this guy does as well. And I love how you can actually tilt these so you can get a wide stance with them. So getting them standing out like that, that it does hold fairly decently which is really very cool uh, it was starting to slide a little bit because this is kind of slick but in general this guy really did turn out much better than I thought that he was going to as I said I had very high expectations because of Quake Wave, and, and this guy definitely lived up to my expectations, I think. It was just, honestly, I didn't think that we were going to get this figure, so that's why I, I was happy getting, you know, a third-party one. For for me, third-party figures are meant to kind of fill a void, uh, so when a new one comes out that's an official one, you don't need to have that third-party one, and luckily so far, the official ones, when they've come out, in my opinion, have done better than the those third party ones so it does make it easier uh, to kind of replace those third party figures with the official ones and shockwave here absolutely lived up to my very high expectations now to uh, transform them back what you want to do you want to give this a little push put that all the way down just like so rotate these up and around it's so again it, it's so funny how much this does transform like the g1 toy uh, it, it's actually kind of cool that it does it as, as well i mean it's a nice kind of throwback to that whole thing so setting that there angling up some so that you can see a little bit better you're going to detach this and then this whole section slides out come on kind of locks in there fairly securely come on get that now, let's see. Yeah, it, it is in there pretty good. There we go. Pull that out. Bring that out like so. Bring this down. And you want to bring this around and get that kind of out of the way. Swivel this around, and then you bring these two halves together. Kind of lift this, and you're going to tuck the hands underneath there. When you get that, you can then squeeze this together. They do tab together along the inside of the forearm, so you can lock that into place. Then these, you want to swivel this down and cover that there, do that on this side as well, cover that there, and basically you have the, the front of his gun done. Then come around here to the legs, you're going to spin these around at the upper part of the thigh, just like so. I guess you can take this, collapse this piece up, and then collapse this whole torso section down. It just shifts up a little. So straighten that out like that, and take these legs, pull this out like so, and then, yeah, get that there. Yeah, there we go. And then angle this around. What am I doing here? Angle this. Come on. There we go. Just like that. Bring that down and around just like so. And then you do that on this side as well. Separate this. Bring this down. Keep that up there. And this swivels around just like so. And then you can bring these two halves kind of together but first what you want to do is then take this foot section rotate that all the way around like so rotate that around like so take this detach this from that section there rotate this back and getting that out of the way and then you just tuck that in just like that do that on this side as well so rotate this up and around and then again you bring these two halves together give that a nice little squeeze right there Nice, and then you got this little section right here. You just kind of shift this up and that kind of slots into place uh, This little piece here can be a little bit tricky to get back out But once you get it, it's pretty easy to do and I'm just sitting there pulling the trigger on there and making it blow up Then take this rotate this around like that You can bring that in if you had it extended for whatever reason do it on this side as well to Add that together and then this little section right here. You just push up and it kind of tabs in. It really doesn't tab in all that well. You can kind of see that there, there's a big gap right there still. So that's why it's easy to kind of take this and just attach this. You don't actually really even have to pull these down to do that section of the transformation because it doesn't go up all that high. It, it barely sits there. So you have that. Then you just take this, rotate this around, give this a nice little push that 
push gets this all the way down and then you take the uh, target lift that up just like so and then this little section right here all you do is you take this you rotate this around that'll lock down you kind of put that there just kind of fill it in and then put that right there and there you got shockwave back in his vulcan laser cannon whatever space gun mode and yeah, as I talked about, I did have really high expectations for this guy. The, the fans toys figure really did set the bar very high on it. And there are still some things about that Quakeway figure that I really do like. Like I said, the actual transformation is a little bit more involved than what we have here, obviously. And I like that, that, you know, a challenge is fun to do. But I think that Takara really did nail the you know, overall shockwave feel by giving him a very similar transformation to, to what he had in his G1 toy. Because that cartoon had a very similar transformation as well. So I think that what they did in going with this kind of design and transformation sequence works for it because it fits for that character. Gun mode wise, it looks great. There are a few things that I don't particularly like, uh, like for example, the, the back section here and the gap right here. Uh, the, you got the trigger, you can barely get your hand in there. I mean, I'm a bigger guy, so I mean like it's a little bit tougher, but I love what they did with the actual uh, laser sort of thing lighting up in there. I think that's really cool. I love that they gave you you know, a way to actually have it stand like this. I mean, I think that that is brilliant. And then you can part form that to actually become his backpack. So it makes sense. While I do think that the gun mode is probably the weakest looking, that's not too much of a knock because as you can see, it still does kind of look like the G1 toy. So it's not even that much of a slight on, oh, I should show you that uh, while the uh, little batteries for the, the arm light up thing are right here, you got the uh, AAA batteries uh, for this gun section lighting up uh, right up in there. You just take that screw out. But um, I mean, gun mode wise, I think it turned out pretty good. But what I really think is the best on this is the way that the guy looks in robot mode. That thing it, it is just breathtaking. I love it. it. It really does absolutely impress me with what they were able to do with it. I mean, the head looks great. I mean, the arm looks great. All the various accessories that you can swap out with, you know, the hands and things like that, just wonderful. And then aesthetically, I just think that he looks a little bit better, especially in the leg region, than that Quake Wave. Both, though, are great figures. But ultimately, when it comes down to it, I am going to want to support the official figure more than the third party one. As I talked about, I feel that third parties just kind of fill in the gap until we get an official one. And luckily, so far, the official figures that have come out to kind of replace those other ones have been home runs, in my opinion. So that's what we're looking at here with Shockwave. And now, since we got one gun transformer, let's hope that we get another one. And I think you all know who I'm talking about. That would be a second version of Masterpiece Megatron. But if Shockwave here is a figure that you'd like to pick up and add to your collection, he is available right now at Big Bad Toy Store. So all you have to do is click on the link down in the video description. You'll go to BBTS where you can check out availability on this guy as well as the rest of the Takara Masterpiece figures. But beyond that, guys, that's about it. So once again, I'd like to thank you for tuning in. This has been Optobonimus. I'd really appreciate it that if you like this review, to please click that like button and be sure to share this video. Also, make sure that you're subscribed in case you haven't already subscribed. That way you never miss a future review. And until next time, I'll talk to you later. You're